We now consider the President in his role as Commander-in-Chief. Even if he has little or no military experience, the President is the commander of every member of the United States military. The framers of the Constitution felt that civilian control of the military was important to avoid a military dictatorship. However, the Constitution establishes a tension between the executive and legislative branches with regard to the use of the military. On the one hand, Article 2 says that the President is Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. But Article 1 says that only Congress can declare war. The United States has been involved in hundreds of military conflicts throughout its history. But only five of those have actually been wars that were declared by Congress. The most recent time that Congress declared war was World War II meaning that our wars in Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and neither of our wars in Iraq were ever declared by Congress. Most recently, President Trump's decision to bomb Syria in April 2017 was challenged by even members of his own party. Concerned by the expansion of the Vietnam War, Congress in 1973 passed the War Powers Resolution over President Nixon's veto. The War Powers Resolution was an attempt to restrict the ability of the President to make war without the consent of Congress. Its first main provision said that the President can only commit troops to hostilities in three specific circumstances. Of course, the President could commit troops to hostilities if Congress declares war, or if Congress authorizes it in some other way, or if the United States is invaded. The second main provision of the War Powers Act says that the President must report to congressional leaders within 48 hours of committing troops to hostilities. The third and final main provision of the War Powers Resolution says that if the President does commit troops to hostilities without having obtained congressional approval, the operation has to end within 60 days. However, if the President asserts it's necessary for the safety of the troops, he may extend this by 30 days for a total of 90 days. The War Powers Resolution was passed over Richard Nixon's veto, and all Presidents since have said that it's unconstitutional. But despite the important constitutional issues, the Supreme Court has never ruled on this law, and it likely never will. Presidents think the law is unconstitutional, but they've nevertheless usually tried to abide by its provisions. This is because it's usually a good idea politically to try to get agreement from Congress, so if the war goes badly, it isn't the President's fault alone. Most recently, the President's role as Commander-in-Chief has been tested by the War on Terror after the September 11th attacks. The courts have confronted two main issues. First, whether the foreign prisoners held at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, have any rights, and if so, what they are. The second main issue has been whether United States citizens can be held as enemy combatants. In a series of three decisions, the Supreme Court has held that the President can indeed detain both groups of people for a period of time, but that both groups do have certain legal rights that the President must respect, although the extent of those rights are still subject to dispute.